everyone happy holidays and welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to paint these cute little gingerbread cookies two ways one with a background and one without now don't forget to comment and subscribe for more videos and give this video a thumbs up because it really helps out my channel spread that Christmas cheer if you follow me on Instagram, then you would have already saw these cookies last year because I baked them last year and painted them as well in my watercolor sketchbook. Well, I decided to recreate them for you guys for today's Christmas tutorial. I have to say that I really do think that the watercolor painting came out much better than the cookies themselves, which I'll insert some pictures because, well, frosting is just not a paint. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm starting off with the Arches 100% cotton watercolor paper in the hot press version, but I really do recommend the cold press to anyone. But since I am doing a review on this hot press paper, I wanted to use it again just to refresh my memory. And I recently did do a review on the Arches rough press paper, so I'll leave that linked up in case you're interested as well. But you'll have to wait for the review to know my feelings about this paper. So I'm starting off by dropping in some of the colors uh, wet into wet into the background. I'm using some ultramarine blue, some muted gray that I mixed from ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm also adding in a little bit of the alizarin crimson to get kind of a murky violet in some places. I'm also splattering in some of the ultramarine blue wet into wet while the background of the paper is still wet. I'm applying the background pretty sloppy and haphazardly because I'm really not too concerned about getting that blue onto the gingerbread cookies since ultramarine blue is a sedimentary pigment and will lift back up off the paper fairly easily. I'm making the background very murky, muted, and subdued in color because I don't want it to distract from the candy bright colors of the cookies. Just a simple, icy, snowy background. After I've allowed that background to dry completely, I'm coming in with a toothbrush and some white gouache to spray that finely all over the background. This is the Winsor & Newton Designer Gouache in the permanent white shade because I find that one to be the brightest, strongest, and the most opaque white gouache that I've ever found and the most permanent in terms of it adhesion. It doesn't crack like some other brands do and I do highly recommend it. In this application, I'm not using the gouache at full strength because I really don't want it to, um, I don't want it to be as bright as it possibly could be because I want the highlights on the candy to be the brightest white and the most powerful highlights that I have in the piece. Now, being that I am using white gouache for this piece, it now technically becomes mixed media. So just to let you know, it's no longer a traditional transparent watercolor, if that's important to you, or if uh, you're thinking about entering it into certain competitions, it won't work anymore. I'm then using a super small double zero size detail brush to add a few illustrative snowflakes um, to the background just to make it fun and festive. But again, I want it to be pretty subtle and not pull focus. Now moving on to the cookies, I applied masking fluid first to any areas of white frosting that I wanted to preserve and allowed that to dry completely. I wet all the areas first and then I'm dropping in some raw sienna and burnt sienna where appropriate. I'm sort of base coating it with the raw sienna and then dropping in some burnt sienna just on the edges where it would have been just a little bit golden browned or just slightly toasted by the oven to get that baked good, good kind of look. Now, raw sienna is very similar to yellow ochre, but it's just a little bit more toasted. It's just a little more toasty. It's got a little bit more red in it, and that makes it just perfect for baked goods. I have really fallen in love with raw sienna over the last year. It's been such an underrated pigment in my collection. I would almost always reach for yellow ochre, but recently I have been grabbing more for raw sienna, or equally as much at least. 
I've gained a new appreciation for it. It also has a lovely granulation that really helps to add to that effect. Now, while the paint is still wet, I am dropping in some coarse grind kosher salt. You really do wanna use the coarse grind here because it's going to get you the most pronounced, rocky kind of baked cookie texture. Um, so make sure that you use that. Now, if you watched my last tutorial on the autumn leaves, you saw that I used salt in a different way. I applied a wash of gum arabic and paint and then dropped in the salt. That will get you a completely different look. So make sure that you're not using any gum arabic in this painting, otherwise uh, you're not gonna be too happy. Something else to keep in mind as you're working through these cookies is that even though you're going section by section, a foot here, a hand here, a face there, you wanna make sure that each part of the cookie looks like it belongs to the same cookie so it's whole and cohesive. It is all right to have some cookies lighter and some cookies darker because maybe they came from different batches or maybe the oven heats up unevenly. It's okay to tell the story uh, in that way, but you shouldn't have um, a cookie where, you know, spontaneously one leg is super light and the rest of the cookie is dark. You see what I'm saying? So just make sure you're backing up and you're seeing the cookie as a whole um, and that the whole thing looks correct and cohesive versus just focusing on one tiny little section at a time. Once that paint has dried completely, you'll notice a very pronounced texture. It's important to remove that salt carefully without removing the masking fluid before glazing over. Now glazing will not only allow us to build depth and realism, but knock that texture back a bit. With the use of a unifying wash or a unifying glaze, it will subdue that texture to a more realistic place and what you'll be left with is a very realistic rendering of the texture of a natural gingerbread cookie. I'm beginning to add shadows onto the cookie itself, not under the cookie yet, but on the cookie directly, mostly underneath the frosting because the frosting would have some weight to it and there would be a shadow from that frosting so we have to add that visual weight. Moving on now to work on some of the frosting, not the white frosting yet, we'll tackle that later, but the candy buttons and the fondant. Now, those little round candies are super simple. They are just basic little spheres, so, you know, lighter in the middle, darker around the edges, and keeping in mind the light source. The scarf and the little pants I made out of fondant, so they will be quite flat, but the rest is piped icing. So it's important that you create that illusion that it was piped out of a frosting bag by adding dimension to them and some shape. But also, don't make these too perfect. I made them far more perfect than the actual cookies, of course, but I still left them pretty imperfect and that's on purpose. For me, that is part of the charm of this painting. As you can see, as I'm going through, I'm being pretty sloppy and clumsy compared to a lot of my usual work and that is intentional. I want these to look hand decorated and that's part of the charm and childlike wonder of the season and of handmade baked goods. So I wanted to make sure that I included that. I think these came out super, super cute by the way. That uh, cute little guy down there in the right hand corner with the swoopty hair, it has to be my absolute favorite. He is just so cute. His hair looks absolutely fabulous. And I even added a little bit of blush to his cheek. It's, it just looks like he was just in the oven a little bit too long and his cheeks got a little bit toasted. Uh, something I wasn't, a detail I was not able to add on the actual cookies for obvious reasons, but I added that little creative touch to the painting and I just think it brought them alive. 
Now I should mention in terms of color mixing that anywhere that you see red is predominantly the alizarin crimson and anywhere you see green, I'm using phthalo green. This is one of the few instances where I will use straight phthalo green out of the tube because it is so bright, unnatural, fluorescent, glowing neon green. But here it works because the green fondant was mixed with food coloring and it was that exact bright, candy colored green so it worked excellent and anywhere that I wanted a shadow on the green I added a tiny bit just a small amount of the alizarin crimson same thing in the red areas wherever I wanted a darker red I mixed just a tiny and I mean the tiniest touch of the phthalo green into the red to make it a little bit darker now if you mix these colors straight in the middle you will neutralize them out perfectly and you will get a near black the phthalo green and the alizarin crimson and that is how I mixed my very chromatic black for any of the black details um, on these uh, gingerbread cookies for example the eyes um, and the smile on a few of them there so that's important to keep in mind it will be very harmonious do not use a black out of the tube it's just never use a tube black or a tube gray it is a very amateur mistake i'll probably say that in every tutorial video because i can't harp on that enough Another quick little tip that I wanted to give you about the little round candies is that it's better to go in and start off very, very small. Start much smaller than what you think you want the size of those little round candies to be. And then naturally as you go in to perfect your shape and get it more round, they'll get a little bit larger. So it's better to start off a little bit smaller than you think, go a little smaller because they will start to get bigger and bigger on you as you go and uh, make them a little more round. Time to move on to the white frosting. I've removed the mask fluid and I'm adding shadows with very watered down grays. Some warmer and some cooler, all from colors I've already used in the painting and that will make it very harmonious. I'm softening some of those shadows by coming in with a damp brush after I've applied the color with a more detailed brush. This is wet on dry paper. I'm not using any white gouache at all, actually, on the white frosting. I'm letting the white of the paper shine through. When using gouache in a watercolor painting, it's important to keep in mind that in order to merge it in, in a way that's very natural looking in a watercolor painting, you need to use it very sparingly. That way you come away with a more seamless and professional finished look. Now, remembering not just to add shadows to the frosting itself, but underneath the frosting as well, which we already did start to do before, but now that the masking fluid has been removed, we can really go in and sharpen up those shadows, crispen up any edges, and make sure your values are correct. And now it's time to add those shadows underneath the cookies. As always, keeping in mind the light source, and that all of the cookies look like they belong to the same light source since they are all in the same scene together. Something else to keep in mind is that it's okay to add some of that red or green into the shadow because shadows often have influence of the colors around them. If you add a little bit of the red or the green in some places, and I would encourage you to do that, you'll come away with a more lively look. It is a very lovely effect and it will add something special and brilliant to your paintings if you choose to do that in your artwork as well. 
My gray here is a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm using these colors not just because they mix a lovely classic gray, but because it's very liftable and easily corrected if I make a mistake. I'm wetting the area around my shadow first because I want them to blend out soft. Shadows are one of those things that can be a little bit tricky and difficult, especially for beginners, so doing it this way will certainly help make things easier. Making your gray shadow color mixed from granular sedimentary colors makes them more correctable later. If you aren't perfectly happy with the placement of your shadows, you can always go in and lift some of it out or correct it. If you use staining colors like phthalos, quinacridones, then these are going to really stain the paper. They sink really deep into the paper and they won't be liftable or correctable later. So they're not beginner friendly or goof proof in that regard. I just wanted to add some of that in just in case you were struggling with your shadows, but practice, practice, practice. Just making some final adjustments, making sure my values are correct adding the finishing touches and last minute details, especially to the little scarf and the little pants, cleaning up my edges where it needs it, softening and diffusing edges where appropriate, and making sure I have all those shadows in, on, and under the frosting and under the cookies and the candy details as well. All right, so I thought that for this last finishing touch of the tutorial, I would do it in real time and we'd do it together. If you don't want to add this, then you could be done right now at this point and have some cute little gingerbread cookies. You could put this on a card or, you know, just a little painting for the holidays. I think they're so fun and cute, and I really think they came out better than my actual cookies did. Here are the ones that I sketched um, in watercolor from last year. I did these on um, a cold-pressed watercolor paper in this Strathmore journal and I did it without the background. Uh, you could absolutely do this without the background if you want, that's perfectly fine. But I wanted to note really quickly that um, this is the uh, Arches Hot Press watercolor paper and mm, I have some thoughts on this paper so uh, if you're interested a review on this will be coming next but uh, yeah well <laughs> We'll have to stay tuned for the review to see how I feel. But as you can see, when I move this in the light, the, sh the cookies shimmer just a little bit. This one looks sugar-coated, and I added some of those glittery details into the others very subtly as well. So to do that, I have some Winsor & Newton Iridescent Medium. You can apply this as strongly as you like, or as we're about to do on this guy, to make him look sugar-coated, I'm gonna dilute this down quite a bit. But first, I'm going to use it quite strong. I've got this in a little dish here. Actually, I think these are uh, supposed to be for spices and things, but I use mine for various mediums and um, solvents here in the art studio. But I absolutely love this. So I'm just going to take a brush. This won't hurt your watercolor brushes, even your nice ones. There's nothing here that's going to hurt anything. And I did email Winsor Newton, the company, and they are, it is fully archival from what I was told. So I'm just going to add a little bit on his pearly white buttons to make those look you know, a little more shimmery and stand out. I'm gonna add some in his hair like I did on this one last year. Just a little bit to make his hair a little bit more special and kind of sparkly. I should name these so <laughs> you know which ones I'm talking about. Um, let's call this one uh, Carl. He's Carl. Look at his little swoopy hair and his blush. He's so cute. So cute. Um, over here on this one, I think I'm just going to add a little bit to one of the stripes. Over here, we'll give him a little shimmery accent. I'm going to use it mostly full strength on these more shimmery accents. Where did I add that also? Oh, um... I added some, let me water that down a little bit, just a tiny bit. I added some into his little headpiece here, his little earmuffs. So 
you can really go around and add these little shimmery accents wherever you like but this idea came last year originally because I thought you know what I'd love to make that one look sugar coated and um, after I did that I'm like well the other ones need some accents too so I'm going to take a very soft brush for this this is the Princeton Neptune number no. six and I'm going to dilute this way down as you can see hopefully you can see that I'm just going to keep adding water until I've got it very diluted and because the binder for this is gum arabic you can water it down as much as you want without underbinding anything so you'll still get that shimmery effect I'm adding maybe four or even five brushfuls because I want this very transparent a very subtle to make him look sugar coated and then I'm just gonna go over the whole cookie very softly I don't want to move any of the paint underneath and make it look, uh, you know, or smudge any of the shadows or the details. I don't want to go over the buttons. I want to make sure I'm going around all of that. Not trying to bump into the frosting at all. But just going around and making him look sugar coated. And when that dries, the effect is really lovely and so sweet and cute. And that finishes up the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you will try my gingerbread cookies. If you do, be sure to send me pictures on Instagram because I'm on there and I will leave you a link uh, down below to my Instagram because I post fun things over there. I just think these came out so cute and that iridescent medium when you really sheer it out. Look how it moves. Look how it sparkles when it moves and turns in the light. I think that would be beautiful for a card or just a fun little holiday painting that you could put up in your house. I think it makes a cute gift. I'm absolutely in love with these cookies. I'm going to make more this year too and I'll have to paint those maybe next year. But here's these uh, the cookies without the background. I like them just as much honestly. I don't know why I insisted on throwing these little guys out into the snow. But um, I took the tape off and revealed that nice clean white border and uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe before you go for more videos. And uh, you guys have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday because truly, you deserve it. Thank you guys again for watching. Bye.